Varmt, varmt välkommen tillbaka. Vi är i studion. Ja, men det är i studion här på Elmia Subcontractor. Det bland annat händer. Vi ska nu ladda upp för en session med Inodex alldeles strax. Därefter så ska vi höra mer om Tech Arena. Och båda de här två finns ju nere i hall D. Fantastiska utställningar. Så ner dit och snacka mer med dem. Därefter så händer massvis med mer saker, nämligen nedslag ute på mässkor och mycket, mycket mer. Men nog snackat om det. För jämte mig här i studion har jag nu Sasha. A warm welcome to you, Sasha. Yeah, so thanks for take, having me. Yeah. Take it away about the Indodex. And, yeah. uh, and I know that you have one uh, on the phone here. Yeah, yeah, I have a guest who is uh, with me. Uh, but f uh, let's say some words about what he is talking about. Uh, in the next years, it will be all about sustainability, how can we, uh, we reduce emissions everywhere in the world, how can we stop polluting the environment. Uh, looking to mobility, uh, we see a, a shift into electric cars um, with fewer CO2 emissions and what's left is um, fine dust, abrasion from brakes and tires. Our next guest uh, will present a technology to reduce brake dust emissions. So a warm welcome to Andreas Storz, CEO of Applied uh, Nano, uh, uh, no, nan, uh, Applied Nano Surfaces from Akrat in Germany. Thanks for coming and you have a presentation with you. I, I guess, <laughs> and we'll talk about something we have in our exhibition. Uh, yeah, it's your stage. Thank you very much. Warm welcome back to Sweden and uh, welcome to my lecture to everybody listening. Next slide, please. First, I would like to give you a short introduction about uh, the, the topic and the issues and um, then I would like to discuss and describe the starting point, um, show you uh, where we see the task and uh, how to approach it in a holistic solution. Then um, we'll give you some insights about the matrix alloy development, which is key to the success. Um, what this, does this mean to the production process? And uh, then, of course, last but not least, machining of such a, a component. Then summary and outlook to see what's coming up in the next years. Next slide, please. Yeah, the benefits of uh, technology and civilization uh, are usually accompanied, please go ahead, with um, side effects and harmful impacts uh, that need to be minimized. And this applies in particular also to mobility with consumption of resources and risk of accidents and um, emissions in the broadest way. Um, lately, we have increasing, increasing um, uh, focus on particulate emissions since um, with the trend to electric mobility, um, the emissions from tailpipes are reduced or omitted completely. So what's left, please go ahead, uh, are emissions from uh, particulates, uh, especially from tires and brakes, and um, also regenerating, re regenerating and um, uh, bringing back into the environment by uh, wind and um, traffic on roads. So we have to concentrate on these particulate emissions since they are also um, part of the upcoming Euro 6, 7 emission legislation that is planned to be introduced in 2025. Please go ahead. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, particulate emissions and the harmfulness of these particles are uh, obvious and uh, common understanding and um, even uh, have um, negative as aspects on um, on brains and uh, so this is a main concern for for future so when we start um, we have to look at the brake system which has the 
uh, objective to um, extract kinetic energy from the vehicle when we want to get it uh, come uh, decelerate or come to a standstill. And um, the simplest way to convert this energy is to um, convert it into thermal energy, which can then easily be um, uh, dissipated into the environment by convection or radiation. And the direct way to convert kinetic work into heat is friction. So therefore, almost every uh, vehicle, uh, even trucks and trains uh, that move, and also um, planes that have to come to st stand still after landing, are equipped with a um, mechanical brake system that relies on a friction brake. Lately, we have also seen some introduction of recuperative braking, but um, since this is only taking 95% of the overall uh, brake actuations, um, we still need, uh, to a certain extent, some um, mechanical braking. Typical um, brake systems with a, a cast iron disc and um, uh, a pad um, act more or less um, satisfactorily. Um, please go ahead. Um, with the exception of the particulate formation um, during load, especially on uh, at uh, emergency stops at, on highway, and also they tend to corrode. Cast iron is uh, sensitive to corrosion, and this applies mainly also for electric vehicles, where we see that uh, uh, the mechanical brake systems are hardly ever used. And in the idle times, they can collect um, dust, um, uh, corrosion particles on the surface, which counteract uh, the, the brakes, uh, because uh, the sl um, sliding friction on such a surface is um, reduced. So we have to prevent um, for electric vehicles uh, the brake disc from corrosion. Please, next slide. We all know that um, aluminum brake discs uh, are proof, uh, proven to uh, cope with corrosion and uh, are also lightweight. Uh, this was a reason to introduce it in the mid 1990s. Um, but um, they suffer a little bit. Please go ahead with um, as, uh, effects where overload, uh, especially temperature overload, can uh, lead to a destruction of the surface. The key to, uh, to a good working condition is the formation of a transfer film. This is generated by the um, brake pad particles that adhere to the surface of the brake disc and also uh, altogether prevents uh, the brake disc from direct um, interaction with the hard particles of the brake disc. So this is, means that uh, if this is stabilized, uh, it is a, is a very nice um, friction couple with high uh, friction coefficient, but um, more or less no, um, no abrasion, and so uh, very much reduced um, particulate emission. Please go ahead. The issue with um, this type of brake disc is that's, that the used alloy for the matrix, so the matrix that um, inhibits also the, the hard particles, um, is typically a casting alloy and more typically an aluminum silicon type. And these kind of uh, alloys have a maximum operation temperature and with brake discs of about 450 degrees. And this means that, uh, please go ahead, that they are only suitable for light vehicles and mid-sized cars, rear axles, for example, so compact cars. And um, since the trend is also to, to drive larger vehicles with more heavy weight, uh, like SUVs, this is not satisfactory for, for introduction into the, into the uh, broad market. Next slide, please. On the other side, um, OEMs have shown that um, if we can manage to generate this kind of, um, of transfer film and sustain it and also cope with the temperature load, then uh, we can dramatically reduce the particulate matter emissions um, at minimum 95%. And the rest uh, is 
basically something that is, is drawn out of uh, uh, from the centrifugal forces, etc. Next slide, please. So the task that we have to cope with is that we have to um, specify um, requirements for the matrix alloy, that we have su sufficient uh, compressive uh, strengths at high temperatures. And the benchmark here is gray cast iron. We need to um, regard a low density um, so that we still have weight saving, which is uh, very important for electric vehicles. It extends their range. We must keep the corrosion resistance um, in combination of cell spray test and brake testing. And then we have also to regard that uh, we do not exceed the cost. Um, a likely possible surcharge to uh, conventional systems are about 35 euro, which can, matches um, other alternative uh, solutions like uh, dust collectors and uh, things like that. Then for the reinforcement, <clears throat> we have to see that we uh, can integrate uh, between 25 and 50 per, uh, percent, volume percent of uh, hard particles. So there seems to be a sweet spot around 35. Um, we have to distribute them homogeneously within the mat matrix. Um, the size should be about 10 to 25 uh, micrometers, which is an empirical value. And then for machining, uh, it is very important to have a very flat and plain parallelism of the disk sides to each other to uh, um, ensure that uh, we have a very good um, mating with the brake pad to achieve uh, a good level of, of friction. Then uh, we need to um, reliably form the transfer film either during machining or in a final machining stage. Next slide. So this is uh, our holistic solution approach because uh, we have to regard uh, all these aspects and bring it all together in a solution uh, for a um, MMC or AMC, aluminum matrix composite material. Next slide, please. The issue as described is that uh, conventional casting alloys soften about at uh, above 250, 300 degrees. So Typical uh, maximum operation temperatures are 350 for pistons for combustion engines. In um, brake disc, where we have predominantly um, compressive stress, um, this can be extended to 450 degrees because uh, the hard particles support the compression very light, nicely. Uh, on the other side, uh, when we look at alternatives, we see that titanium alloys are very expensive hard to process and uh, also have uh, poor tribological properties. So it's ruled out at the moment. Next slide, please. Um, so comparison of uh, maximum operation uh, temperatures and uh, melting of the first phases, um, we see that uh, for aluminum and the conventional um, approaches, we can uh, reach at most about 550 degrees operation temperatures with um, uh, an alloy that contains aluminum iron phases, for example, so transition elements. Uh, with the conventional casting alloys, we are much lower. In comparison, cast iron brake discs are used typically uh, up to 750 degrees where we have a phase change. Steel also due to phase changes at about 800 and uh, titanium as well, where we have a alpha gamma transition at those temperatures. Just to mention, um, uh, carbon carbon or carbon silicon carbide disks have a maximum operation temperature of about 1200 degrees, which, which is uh, unbeatable <laughs> as far as I can see. And that's why they are used, for example, in race cars and, and uh, airplanes. Continue, please. Luckily, we found a system uh, that consists of aluminium, titanium, and manganese, um, which has an area um, where it consolidates in a single phase uh, in a cubic form, which means that it has at, at least uh, a little bit of a ductile phase. Um, and the attractive properties are low density at about 3.7 uh, grams per cubic centimeters 
and uh, solidify, uh, melting temperature of about 1,350 degrees. Next slide, please. There are also uh, other nice effects. Uh, please carry on. Um, we see in the, in the um, melting uh, and heating diagram that we don't have a phase change until uh, above uh, 1,100 degrees. That means that we don't have uh, any issues with, um, with phase changes and uh, hot cracks with this material. Next slide. Next. So we see that uh, we can also incorporate these uh, hard particles, in this case, aluminum oxide, because silicon carbide would react with a matrix material to form aluminum carbides, which are very detrimental to corrosion resistance. Next slide, please. So these alloys uh, are very sensitive to the production process. And typically, you have to um, maintain the, the, the balance and the, and the phase formation by rapid solidification. Um, and um, so we decided to use a sintering process. And uh, furthermore, we use the sintering uh, only for the friction phases, which are exhibited to the high temperatures. and uh, bond these uh, friction phases uh, with a layer thickness of three to five millimeter to a carrier plate of conventional uh, aluminum alloy. Uh, continue, please. So uh, we managed um, to achieve uh, this kind of sandwich material for a conventional combination of um, aluminum carrier and um, the um, MMC with a uh, casting alloy or with transition um, metal elements um, in a single stage with very nice um, bonding characteristics, no brittle phases and no uh, uh, detrimental effects of mixing. And in a, a two-stage process uh, with um, the aluminum, titanium, manganese uh, alloy because uh, the high temp uh, melting temperature uh, pro prevents from doing it in a single stage. We would melt, just melt up the, the carrier plate. Next slide. This friction ring can then be mated to a, to a central hub uh, in various uh, versions. This is um, a version shown, uh, adopted from uh, an existing combination of steel bell to a cast iron friction ring in series production at Mercedes-Benz. Next slide, please. So we can make this um, and final machine it. Uh, final machining of um, this kind of uh, alloy, next slide, please, is a bit tricky because <clears throat> MMCs are um, itself abrasive. They uh, serve as a, as a um, grinding wheel by themselves, <clears throat> which means that we have to use um, special tools to prevent from excessive tool wear, that we have a risk of shattering the hard particles when we have a blunt tool <clears throat> and create a deformation zone. And um, as far as I can see, this is also one of the reasons why um, it is so difficult to create a forma the formation of the tra transfer film. Because if you pull out um, shattered particles um, from uh, the matrix in the first break operations, it will never heal. So what we try to do is to uh, apply grinding or lapping, which uh, is more capable of preventing surface de uh, uh, deformation and, and surface uh, degradation. Continue, please. So we did it for the various uh, materials, including casting alloys as matrices. Uh, then we have uh, the um, materials with the transition alloy elements and also with the um, aluminum, titanium, manganese. So this works. And uh, last step that we want to do is to build up the transfer film during the final machining stage um, uh, by driver conditioning. Tribal conditioning is a technology that has been introduced by Applied Nanosurfaces in, um, from Uppsala, Sweden, um, successfully to reduce uh, friction coefficient of steel and cast iron components. So uh, 
despite um, the idea of reducing friction, we want to maintain a certain uh, friction level with brake discs, um, desirably between 0.35 to 0.4. And how can we do this? Um, just carry on. Um, we have studied the formation of uh, the transfer film build-up. Um, this is an example from Audi, um, shown here as hard particle silicon carbide in a matrix. And you can see that there is um, this film formation uh, in the thickness of uh, 0.2 to 1 millimeter. Um, and it is mainly be uh, between the hard particles on the soft matrix. Um, it is, has an amorphous uh, structure or um, very tiny um, abrasive particles uh, containing. And uh, also in the left picture, you can see uh, a little bit of a, uh, a shattered uh, silicon carbide particle, if you look close enough. So carry on, please. The composition of this driver film consists mainly of brake um, pad elements. Um, that contains uh, sulfides and oxides, um, and also of, uh, like iron from fibers. And um, so generally speaking, speaking this is uh, something that can uh, be um, correlated to a technology that has been uh, developed by ANS um, for friction reduction. And um, so we try to apply this technology to uh, break discs. Carry on, please. And we have started the first test, and uh, they look promising that we can generate a very similar behavior of these materials in conjunction with a brake pad. So, summarizing, uh, we have uh, developed a, a concept that is very promising to cope with the future requirements for braking systems because it's free or almost free of particle emissions. We can still keep uh, a weight reduction of about 50%. We have a slightly higher density of the MMC layers, um, but we still keep it because it's only a fraction of the complete brake discs. Uh, we have uh, paid attention to corrosion resistance, so we don't uh, incorporate phases that um, uh, tend to corrode. Um, then um, with just applying this thin layers in a, in a very uh, efficient process, uh, we can run this at acceptable cost. Also plays a major role that we do not deal with um, uh, high costs for machining of the complete components. It's just um, the running surfaces that need to be uh, machined. We have um, no critical raw materials like uh, cobalt or rare earth elements. And um, we see a good potential for recycling because we can just machine off the MMC layers, uh, which can be recycled into the um, consolidation of this material. We think that it's very sustainable because it has uh, a long service life ideally for the complete vehicle life, so you don't have to change your brake discs anymore, which means that uh, the total cost of ownership is very attractive, despite of the on cost uh, for the initial purchase. And because of this um, uh, sustainability, and also because we intend to use um, efficient production methods, we uh, can generate a very low uh, CO2 emission footprint. So we look forward um, to next year because we intend to bring this into um, testing of a full brake disc at an OEM and um, want to prove, um, the, uh, prove the concept uh, to achieve uh, technological readiness level of six or seven and then um, roll out this new and uh, exciting technology to the, the vehicle market to make life better. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot for this interesting um, presentation and the deep dive into your technology. We have the disc on display in our exhibition, so all of you feel free to come to Hall D to see the tech arena, to 
see all this crazy stuff we have uh, there. 